Right, that was good. I managed to do the church. I'm just going to see the time. 10 to 3, that's good. It's the way back now. I always say 3 o'clock's the turning point. Um, I'm sure it took me a good hour. Um, there's a little bit of an incline here and then a lot of it will be downhill when I back to Porlock Weir. But there's the church. There's a graveyard down there, look. There's lots of red gravestones. That's the surname, Red and Irwing. Or Ir Irving. No, Ir Irwing. No, Irving, I think. Yeah, it's a beautiful church. I had to keep this camera to the very last minute. to make sure I could video. I kept my fingers crossed that it had charged. The other one packed up just as I started walking this way. I've got that one on charge now. Now I know you allow a good hour for getting up the steps, you know. There it is, through the trees. Very remote. No lights out here. Now I can do a bit of videoing on the way back because I couldn't video most of this on the way. I did take photos. The camera just about held out for photos but wouldn't do video. Just turning off again just in case that doesn't do it. Yeah, I've... Uh, it's been a quite a hectic day of walking though. The first half of the day, trying to follow the path to Porlock Weir, from Porlock up through Allerford Woods, or I don't know what the name of the woods were, but that was quite some hike. I think I actually got on the hardest route. Um, there is a Coleridge route, well signposted with the quill which was lower down and I think that's the sort of route you take most of the time if you wanted to get back to Porlock. I don't think you'd want to climb in and out of the trees. Do you know what I mean? But I'm glad I've done it. It was strenuous. I was, after quite a lot of walking this week, um, I'm beginning to feel it, you see. So I'm tired now, a bit tired. It's the muscles in the legs are tired. The breathing was a bit poor this morning. Uh, it still is a bit laboured. Um, but I know this most of the walk in a minute is going to be uphill. I mean downhill. There's a bit of up to do now. Oh, I'm so glad I got here though. See, apparently you can, if you, t I think you can walk around the beachway, but um, you really have to make sure the tide's up. But I'm not sure if you can though. Now this is, um, could be called Ashley Park. I had a big house, mansion here. Um, it's got a history which is all written in the documentation, which I'll add to the video's notes. The videos have been very bitty for two reasons. One, I was getting high blood pressure moments, which meant annoyed with the bad signposting. Inconsistency in the description of the route. Not enough information really. Distances would be good and time. Average. Um, the other thing the cameras do sometimes play up. Now, the camera I've got now, the new one, I charged it up fully last night. This morning it packed in very early in the walk. Um, it said it was it battery was exhausted. Now this has happened once before in Alberta. Even the other camera did do quite well. 
actually. But it does pay to take two cameras and a charger. So it has done its work, the charger. I've got the other one on charge now. Yeah, it's time to hike back now because basically I've got to walk back across the weir, the marshes, um, back to my campsite now. That's what I've got to do. Now yesterday I was doing it, it was almost dark when I got back from my walk yesterday. Walk in there. <sighs> lovely, lovely trees. Somebody has done a painting down in Pollock, I think it is. Or somewhere I've been. Um, of the trees, like this. It's really good how she's done it, or he. <sighs> There's lots of, not large groups, but four people in fours and fives. Um, and lots of couples, of course. I've only met one person on their own. No, two, a young lady and an older lady. I've seen a few sing uh, chaps on their own as well. Um... I think we've got to go uphill again for a little bit in a minute. So look at that view there. So this is Sheila over at Porlock Weir area, visiting a small, small, tiny, tiny little hamlet of Colburn. Um, I've got, it is in decline, sort of. There's not many people live there. And those that live there, they're trying to protect their privacy because of the visitors that come here to just to see the very old thousand year old church um, dedicated to Saint Bayou, I think I'll be I'll, something like that. Um, it's very Celtic. There was a great feeling of peace there. Peace that I can't really describe. Almost a solemn, very solemn piece. I mean, I'm sure people take photos, but it was extreme serenity in there um, and peace. But a, like I say, a solemn peace. A sort of peace that says, go away from here and remember to find your peace. You know, it's like deeper peace than I even imagine. Um, I can imagine my sister Jude would have loved that little chapel. I That sort of chapel, I, I can link with her so much when she has her beliefs. And um, the sort of peace there. I can imagine Jude sat in there, in that chapel. I don't know, Stuart, he might have gone out and had a wander around outside. But I can see Jude sat there. In the past, before she got ill. I bet she has been there. I feel her all round this area. She's been with me on these walks, even though they've been traumatic at times. Mainly because of... Uh, all the reasons I've already said. But the most of the experience here for four days has been really, really good. Um, it's the usual thing when you're a woman on your own, though. Um, most people are fr friendly and kind, but you do get people who, like, give you... They're suspicious of you because you're a woman on your own. It's true. You know... And a lot of these people that go out in big groups wouldn't even dream of doing what I do, walking on their own. I mean, my my daughter Georgia thinks I'm really brave doing anything like this by myself. But I've always done it, though. I, I walk through the Caledonian forests up in um, Scotland on the way from Inverness to... I can't remember where I was going now, or, or it might be going to Inverness, I don't know. 
Well, I think it was a 25 mile walk I did that day. But I was very fit and I had a huge rucksack. Um, I never used to get breathless. Didn't smoke a lot in those days either. <sighs> I turned off for a little while. I haven't hardly eaten anything. I've had an ice cream. I've had a sweet. I haven't had my flake. I had an ice cream there. Um, I find that it's best not to eat. I get indigestion more if I've had something to eat. But then you do start feeling hungry. Um, you know, you start feeling hungry. I mean, what I could do with tonight, but I doubt if anything's open in Porlock, is fish and chips. A nice wad of fish and chips would go down lovely. But they shut everything, they. Once the holiday makers are gone, I think somebody's gone on holiday at does the chip shop. But I might wander up there later. Over and out for now. This walk hugs the coastline up high. When you see those big hills sort of sticking out that I've, I've taken many pictures of from a distance, you see the big outcrops. Well, these, this, this is them. I'm actually walking in the wood. See these sort of outcrops. Um, what I'm doing, I'm sort of walking. I'm sort of walking around these outcrops. See, there are other paths. Actually, if you had time, you could think, oh, I'll just go and have a look up there and things like that. You know, there, there are places you could probably go and explore, you know. But the first walking up here was all uphill. I mean, I'd already been doing a lot. Look at these lovely woods again. Oh, beautiful, aren't they? I'd already been doing a lot, and then I had to. It's all uphill, the steep steps and everything. Just turning off while I take. <coughs> I'm not quite sure what's happening with the camera. I did a five minute talk then and it, none of it came out. I was talking about how these old 18th, 17th, 18th century societies and cultures of England gradually disappeared because of changing the economy with the Industrial Revolution, 